back to the Halo series. My name is Douglas Brown, CEO at Halo Consulting. Today we are joined by Becky Wassing, Vice President of People Operations at OnSite.io. Today marks our 30th Halo series, so thank you for joining us, Becky. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing just fine, Doug. I'm getting, getting into the holiday spirit here and um, just wanted to say uh, congrats on your 30th episode and it's an honor to be here. Wonderful. And if you're new to this event, Halo hosts monthly thought leadership roundtables covering current trends in the HR tech and DEI space. Don't forget to check out the Halo mini series where we hear from executives taking a deep dive into a multi-part series discussing what's keeping them up at night. If you've enjoyed this content, hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to visit Halo's LinkedIn page to subscribe to the Halo Content Hub, which summarizes current market trends and recaps past events. And that link can be found in the description. Throughout our session, we will cover best practices for scaling the HR function for high growth startups. Before we kick off the questions, let's get started with you, Becky. Uh, can you share with our audience where you started your career and how it has evolved into being the Vice President of People Operations at OnSite.io? Yeah, of course. Um, good question. Um, majority of my career has been in the tech startup and scale up space, um, but it didn't start there. My first role out of college, um, was in a really fun time, um, 2007, 2008. Um, economy wasn't the greatest, but I was lucky to get a job using my HR degree um, from the University of Minnesota. And I started at the airport, so the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, and I did three years of kind of um, front to full cycle, we'll just call it employee HR um, specialist work. So did a lot of, uh, let's say, recruiting, onboarding, um, training and development, um, dabbled a little bit in employee relations. It was a really unique world, um, all the different types of employee groups. So you've got your exempt, non-exempt, work with two different unions. Um, and it's it's really where I think I, I discovered or like totally solidified my love for HR and um, helping people. Um, it was a very big company, um, but I enjoyed my time there. Um, it was a long commute. So um, I was looking for a new new job opportunity coming out of a pretty rough winter here in Minnesota. <laughs> My commute was just too long. Um, and I got recruited um, through networking to a uh, local tech startup in the Minneapolis St. Paul area um, and uh, called Quantum Retail. And that's where I kind of started dabbling and getting involved in the tech space and tech startup space. Um, and there kind of helped um, work with the director of HR to implement different HR programs and processes uh, and really fell in love with the, the challenging work that comes um, comes with startups, but it's also so rewarding to kind of really get to roll your sleeves up, um, dig in and do be a big part of the building um, and helping um, implement things from a fundamental like ground up level. Uh, from there, after the company was acquired, um, I went to my second startup at Conservice. Uh, Conservice is an egg tech company, um, led the HR uh, team there helped build the foundation up as well. Um, we tripled in size, were acquired, um, and then I'm doing it um, all over again right now with a company um, called OnSiteSite.io, like Doug mentioned. Um, we rebranded from Anno. Um, we are an AI uh, focused company. Um, and we are currently um, in the process of finalizing a new product that we are building. And it's kind of doing it all over again. So um, I've, I'm enjoying it and that's kind of where I'm at today. Sounds like uh, what's going on at OnSite.io is super exciting. And you've successfully navigated the HR function at three separate hydro startups, which is super impressive and a great resume builder. Uh, Becky, what, what else are you looking to achieve on your HR journey? I really have just really fallen in love with the work of coming into different startups and figuring out what their needs are as they're going to grow and scale. Um, so in my spare time um, outside of on sites, I have been doing some consulting work in that space and helping um, a couple of different startups um, kind of start to figure out what their HR foundation um, should look like at the stage that they're at and kind of where it should go in terms of their growth strategies, business strategies, you name it. So um, I've been dabbling in that space a little bit um, and it's, it's been really rewarding. Um, and it's, it's kind of that same cycle that you come in and build and grow and help the company accomplish their goals. So in, in terms of their, their people function. 
super exciting. Let's dive into our first question. Uh, from your experience, how do you approach strategic planning when scaling the HR function at a high growth startup and what key considerations should be taken in, into account? Yeah, super, super good question. Kind of one of the most critical questions that um, you have to take into account. Um, first and foremost, um, to start really diving in and understanding um, the business strategy um, and the health of the business um, as it currently is. So um, that starts with getting an understanding of kind of um, not only long-term strategies, but any short or mid-term, I'll call them strategies as well, that the company is trying to accomplish. Um, understanding to where they're at in terms of fundraising, if they are fundraising, um, what stage they're at, um, what their um, revenue looks like, runway, earn. Um, I also like to get insight into their customer metrics. Um, customers, obviously, right, and revenue dictate a lot of your talent needs. So it's really good to have a good um, understanding of where they're sitting at and projected for that. Um, I think after you kind of have your head wrapped around that, um, I would recommend looking at kind of what the workforce forecast needs look like. So working closely with other leaders at the company to understand their hiring needs and their hiring projections over time. And then with that, right, you, with those hiring projections comes the skill sets, right, that you're going to need to make sure are filled and any potential challenges that you might see. Um, and then I'll add and we'll touch base on this, I think, a little bit later, um, but truly understanding the company's vision, mission, and values. Um, and those will help kind of shape your HR initiatives. Um, and to be honest, like sometimes when you start at the, these smaller companies, they might not have an understanding of what their vision, mission, and values are. They haven't been carved and defined out. Um, so it is fun to get to partner with the leadership team um, to build what that looks like out. Um, and it's an evolving process. Um, from there, this is, a, this is gonna be my longer answer probably, um, it's really assessing kind of what your current HR capabilities are. So it's your kind of classic HR SWOT analysis. So you're looking at strengths, weaknesses, threats, opportunities, um, and kind of taking those things into account. Um, and then from there, um, it's really looking at kind of the tools and technologies you're going to need to kind of start implementing um, some of the strategies that you're going to need to help the company with. Um, so that could be things like, and you know, if you're doing a lot of you know growth, which usually you are in these situations, making sure that you have a tool like an applicant tracking system in place, that you have an HRIS tool in place, um, and making sure that those tools can scale along with the company is critical. Um, in these companies, you're also doing high growth, like I've mentioned. So developing a scalable recruitment strategy is key. And along with that comes strong employer branding, um, sourcing, and an onboarding process as well. Um, with that also then, there's gonna be a training and development component as you're getting you know, employees started at the company. You're gonna be looking at things like performance management as time goes on and employees are um, you're going through kind of your annual cycles and that could be, you know, reviews, what does compensation look like, things like that. Um, always in the back of the head is your good old HR compliance, um, ensuring that the company is compliant. Um, and that, that might be a little bit gray at the beginning stages of the company, um, but it's little things like getting your workers comp, comp policies in place. Um, things of that nature are super critical. So. Um, I think the main thing too with all of this and just as you start to think about your strategy is that everything you build um, really has to be, in my opinion, adaptable, flexible, and scalable. Um, and you really got to make sure that your, your leadership team um, and your HR team, right, whether it be just yourself or you've got one other person, that there's clear alignment and agreement on kind of what the strategies are that are going to support those business strategies in the long run. Wow, that was, a, that was a very loaded answer, Becky, and thanks for sharing that context. Um, from, from the startups that you've worked at, what qualities do you look for in, in the found, founders or founding team? Yeah, super good question. Um, first and foremost, um, this the, the role I've been in, it, it's critical to have a really strong relationship um, with the CEO at the company. Um, and and with, with that being said, it's really being working with a CEO that understands the value um, of your talent at the company um, and is willing and understands the importance of investing in that talent. Um, 
if, if that's not there, um, it's going to be really hard to scale quickly um, and also be able to attract and, and, and keep, which is key, right? Top talent. Um, so understanding the importance of that, um, I think, is critical. I think having that direct line of communication um, with the CEO is important. Um, this role or the role I've been in does a lot of coaching both ways um, with the CEO. Um, and there too, it's also building out strong relationships, right, with each of the different leaders that potentially and usually report into the CEO as well. Um, and it's things like, I mean, you look for things just like high empathy, right? And I know we've been hearing a lot of that and it's kind of, I don't want to say a buzzword, but it's so critical um, in these environments where you're growing quickly, there's a lot of change. You have, you have to have a good hold on change management. You need to be visible to your employees, available to address concerns, answer questions. Um, so understanding that is super important. Um, strong communication as well, too. So um, I, I think first and foremost, being able to communicate the why um, behind a lot of the decisions you're making that are happening quickly, a lot of the pivots the company is taking, um, one quarter you can have company goals and two quarters later they can look completely different. So um, until the company is kind of fully established um, and they, their product is strong, they've got good customers, um, you're going to see a lot of up and down in those things. So having a leadership team that um, communicates high empathy and understands kind of the importance of, of, of high quality change management is key. Understanding the landscape of investing in top talent is a good segue into our next question. Uh, what are the best practices for attracting and acquiring top talent in a competitive market, especially when the startup is uh, rapidly growing? Yeah, super good question. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm going to, I'll hit hard on um, really building out a strong employer brand. So um, defining and communicating, right, your company's values, missions, and culture as best as you possibly can. Um, and then really building that out. So it's showcasing, right, things like employee testimonials, success stories, um, things that really um, can give potential candidates a glimpse into like a day in the life at what your company is. Um, it's leveraging social media and other platforms to also do this. Um, the number one place your, your prospects and your, your candidates are going to go first, right, is usually your company website. So that story has got to be there. Um, I'll also do a little plug, and this is just something I've been seeing, seeing lately, um, is making sure that it is very clear um, what your company does and what their, who their target market is what they, what, and what they are actually doing and the value they're bringing to their customers. And not just for people that are in the industry and might understand it and get it, but just for you know a simple person, like someone in your family that works in a completely different industry, they should be able to see on your website and get a pretty strong and clear understanding of what your company actually does. I've been in numerous interviews and, you know, and just being able to make sure that that is understood from the get go um, is super important. Another thing I'll say too, and just, and I'll, I'll kind of um, go on back to where I was at, but um, when you are interviewing people, um, really giving them a strong understanding of, of that this is a startup culture, right? So making sure that they they understand that it is not a fully established, you know, 10,000 person company and that things change. Um, we're in the building stages. Um, so it's making sure kind of that you're aligning the, your company's culture, right? And some of those values, making sure you're interviewing with those, making sure you're bringing in people that will be successful in a startup uh, environment because it's not for everybody. Um, for, and then, you know, there's your obvious components too, right? You need to have a, a competitive compensation package. Um, benefits are also super key as well. Um, in startups, right, it's not, um, there's other things that companies that maybe are, um, if they're conserving cash, that they can offer. So things in terms of equity, um, different types of bonus structures. Um, a big one that you're, you've seen, right, over the last, I'd say, five years, right, is work, workplace flexibility, Um and allowing people to kind of um, work as they would as long as the work get done, gets done. Um, there's some simple things too, just making sure that your recruitment process is um, top notch, right? It moves quickly, it's transparent. Um, either with, with whatever direction the decision goes on the candidate that they have a seamless positive experience from start to end. Um, I also think too, it's really important and 
Um, sometimes it's hard to do this, but really to get out and network and engage with talent communities. And this takes time. And I think startups, when they start, they're like, okay, we only need um, one HR person and they're going to handle all of this. But if you're growing and you're growing fast, the sourcing and recruiting, it's a full-time job. Um, so really making sure you understand that and then you put the work into like building out different talent communities, getting your company name out there, um, really building out a good, like I was mentioning earlier, candidate experience is so, so mm -hmm. important. Um, I think to, I'll end with this. Um, the more that you can um, make sure that every single person at your company understands how their work, how and why their work impacts um, what the company is doing and helps the company be successful, you're going to keep people engaged. It's critical. And then the more you can identify um, and help build out different learning experiences for talent to keep them there um, is also critical. And again, in startups, you might not have these massive budgets to have um, like a learning management system and stuff. Um, but this comes down to the leaders, leaders and um, your people managers in your company. And there's tons of different creative ways you can build out um, uh, learning and development opportunities if you don't have a ton, in, ton, in, ton of money to spend. So I'll end with that. I like how you touched on um, building out a strong employer brand, defining the company missions and values, and, and having the ability to showcase success stories and testimonials. Uh, testimonials. Um, I think from a previous conversation we had, Becky, you mentioned that you joined Onsite um, as an employee like in the early 20s. Um, yeah. I think you mentioned they tripled in size. What, what was that experience and growth like for you? Uh, well, you know, it's for me personally, you spend your kind of first and you've got to move quickly. But sometimes you're spending your first 30 to 90 days really trying to just get an understanding of what's going on outside of the things you learn during the interviewing process. And every time I've gone through the interviewing process, right, you fine tune your questions and the things that you kind of need to understand before you start a role. There's a really good book called The First 90 Days. Highly recommend it. Um, I can't think of the author off the top of my head, um, but it kind of gives best tips and practices for starting at a company. But really for me at all the companies I've started, I spend a huge chunk of time at the beginning really getting to know the, the, the leadership team and the employees across the organization. Um, I've done this at every company I've been at, but it's really setting up, setting up literally one-on-one -on -one meetings with everybody and getting to know, um, building those relationships and that trust, getting to um, ask some basic questions like what's working? What do you like about working here? What might not be working? And you're really sponging up as much information and data as you can. Um, yes, you can get your quantitative data and your metrics, right? Um, that the company might currently be assessing. They might not. Um, a lot of times they're not in those earlier stages but that qualitative data is gonna really help um, you make better informed recommendations on kind of what that HR uh, road roadmap, right, might look like in alignment, right, with the company's strategies. So um, it, it's, it's critical to build that trust um, when you first start. Um, it, and it really sets the tone, I think, of, of what the HR team is gonna look like. And it kind of goes back to your employer brand as well. Um, so those are kind of, you know, and all of, all of like back to your question, um, that's kind of what it's looked like in those rat in at those beginning stages. Um, and then from there, right. For me, um, at all of them, it's been kind of in alignment with the company's strategies, taking a look at each year and, and building out kind of what are those top three to four, um, people strategies, um, that you guys, that your team is going to roll out. That's going to help the company be successful. So, um, a lot of times, one of them, a big one, right, with high growth is the recruiting. Um, but a second one could be things like, what are the HR tech, technology and tools that we need to get in place in order to help the company scale um, and to make things more seamless, more efficient. Um, you don't typically get a team of 10, 10 people in the HR in the HR world in those earlier stages of startups. So getting some of those tools in place, um, like a solid ATS, for example, are critical in saving time. Um, and also making that 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 candidate and or employee experience that I keep touching on um, so much more um, positive and impactful as well. So um, it, it's crazy. I'm not going to say it's <laughs> it's perfect. Every day is different. You're constantly problem solving. Um, and then, it, you know, it's kind of like peeling back the layers of an onion every year. 
um, you might start by in, in implementing the basics of a performance management um, program. And I always say start small. Um, and, and as the company grows and can take more on, then you can add in more complexity. Um, over comp, over, making things over-engineered at the beginning stages is really hard. And again, things are changing constantly. So anything that you implement, remember, like it's got to adapt, scale with you. And, um, you know, I've learned lessons where it's like, okay, you know, we implemented a performance management, we'll just say review process. And it was, it was too, too robust for the time. And our, our people managers were swamped. Um, didn't have time to, to complete it um, and, you know, had to change deadlines and all. So it's starting small and building upon it and just truly understanding the impact of anything that you're going to be implementing um, and how it might impact, you know, the users. And, and one, two, like, or, and most importantly, I should say, making sure that, like, it's achieving what you want it to achieve. Um, there's no point in implementing stuff that you don't need. Um, so remember, it's always kind of you know, why are we doing this thing? And is, is it being successful in measuring that success? I have a follow-up question to, to recruiting and talent. Um, at what point of a startup's growth um, did you and the team make the decision to utilize external resources to help hire top talent? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of been a little bit different at every company I've been at. <clears throat> I've always, and I'll say this, like always had a hand in pretty active recruiting at all, all three of the companies I've been at. So, um, and then, you know, from there, it's really bandwidth and what you have. And again, um, for me, it's going back um, and then making sure like the CEO, the leadership team or the teams that are hiring understand like the importance and how much time high quality sourcing and recruiting takes. Once that's identified, um, sometimes you gotta make a decision. Does it make sense to bring a recruiter in house? Um, and what does that role look like? Um, what is that person going to be doing in times where you might not be growing? Is there other things that they contribute to and help on the HR team? So sometimes at the beginning, you might be looking for more of a kind of a, it's kind of a 50% recruiter, 50% generalist to come in, um, that can wear multiple different hats. Um, sometimes you, you can't get that approval and it's like, we're not sure it's going to be high growth, you know, through, you know, for the next six months. Um, so it might make more sense, right, to engage with an outside, um, like, executive, you know, it could be a non-executive, but a headhunter um, or, you know, just a consultant who will recruit on your behalf. Um, a lot of times, you know, I've used that for senior positions or really just um, high niche uh, tech positions that are hard to find. And you really have people go out and comb for those positions for you. Um, recruiting, um, it, it's expensive. Um, so you just really have to look at the cost analysis of it and what makes sense for where you guys are at um, and build upon it from there. I hope that, I think that answered your question, but. Yeah, it did. It was good, good response. Um, okay. let, let's move on to our next question, Becky. Uh, what HR systems and technologies are necessary to ensure efficiency and growth during company growth and expansion? Yeah, this is, this is awesome. This is one of my favorite questions. Um, it's, um. I think first and foremost, and I'm going to start really basic. Um, every, you know, in order for a team, doesn't matter like what you're going to be doing to work together, right? Especially if you're in a hybrid or maybe even a remote setting, you got to make sure you have communication and collaboration tools in place. And those could be simple things that we might kind of take for granted, but a lot of times it's not clear what those are. So things like Slack, um, Microsoft Teams, um, Nero Board, for example. Um, these are kind of the way the team's going to be engaging and collaborating on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, those have to be in there. Um, sometimes they're not. So it's, and it's, it's really communicating with new employees coming in, you know, what, what kind of those day-to-day -day tools look like. Um, sometimes you might see HR also um, help support and partner with finance and accounting on implementing different tools. Um, that could be something like a time tracking tool, depending on your industry. Um, it could be an expense tool. And what does that look like? Something like um, Expensify or Ramp to kind of um, really make um, expense the expense process for employees as seamless as possible. Um, with that being said, I'll kind of move on to the like more elaborate type tools. Um, getting an HRIS in place is so critical. Um, it centralizes information. It streamlines your HR processes. It really reduces a lot of the manual work. It's just your center, central hub for all of your data. Um, so getting a, a, a solid HRIS um, tool in place is, is super important. Um, along that, right, you'll see a lot of times payroll attached to that. 
Um, we talked about high growth a lot in the recruiting process. That applicant tracking system is key. Um, tools like Greenhouse and Lever do an amazing job at automating the recruiting process um, and everything down to like scheduling, you know, candidate interviews. You're, you're, you have 10 open positions. You have, let's just say five, you know, quality candidates and you're recruiting, you know, you're scheduling those interviews exponentially. Um, so have, having a tool to help you with that is, is saves so much time on the back end. Um, as you grow to, and I, I, you know, it depends on the company and where it's at, but um, you're going to start looking at things like um, a performance management um, platform um, to help kind of set, track, and evaluate your employees' goals and performance. Um, there's a lot of really cool all-in-one tools out there. Lattice is a good example of one um, that has kind of that performance management component piece in. It also has an employee engagement and feed, feedback tool in place. Um, and then it can take a look at performance analytics and, and send, you know, spit out some pretty cool um, reported metrics as well. Um, I think companies, it, it's, it's getting more prioritized as a higher priority, but um, a solid learning management uh, platform is also really important that can help with employee training and development. Um, it could be something that offers online courses, um, continuous learning, um, but it's really making sure your employees are equipped with the skills that they need to learn, you know, for their role. Um, at OnSites, we started really small, for example, on the learning management side and just started implementing kind of, we'll call it um, kind of a, a, prefer, or a development budget. Started small, we don't have a tool in place, but we have an allowance that employees can use um, to go off and do different, you know, webinars, seminars, conferences, and things that um, will help them in their role. And there's some guidelines with it, right? Because we want them to bring back what they learned to the company um, and implement it. Um, but you can start with something super small like that too. Um, and I'll just mention this one, um, and then I'll wrap up. I'm very passionate about the tools, as you can tell. Um, but I think just little things too, like. For example, um, one of the companies I'm consulting with right now, we're implementing ben benefits for the first time ever. Um, and just making sure you have like a benefits administration tool so that it can make online, you know, benefit enrollment super easy for people. Um, let's get, you know, get rid of the paper process of it, but there's a lot of tools out there um, like Ease and Employee Navigator that can help with that process and just make everyone's life easier, you know, at, at the end of the day. So. Um, those are things that I think people don't talk about as much, but um, when you get into the end of the year and you're doing enrollment period, it saves a lot of time and uh, stress. So, You shared a couple of good examples like Greenhouse and Lever as an ATS, Lattice as a performance management platform. Um, do you have any recommendations for an HRIS platform? Oh gosh, um, there's a ton of them out there. Um, I'm like, uh, and I'll just say, um, I've, I have a pretty decent relationship with Lattice. Um, they are actually implementing an HRAS tool um, that will be, it's either offering now or out to purchase now or it's coming at the beginning of 2024. Um, I haven't worked with it, but I've heard really good things. Um, I've also worked a lot um, with Gusto. Um, it, it's good for kind of your smaller stage. Um, I think as the company gets um, a little bit bigger, you might want to transition to something else, but that's a good kind of all-in-one tool, and, and they, they keep adding more functionality and more support, um, so I've had pretty good success with that in the past. Um, I have, you know, and, and I'll say this, and this is just something to, to mention, um, not all startups um, are going to have these tools in-house. Some of them might be working um, with PEOs that have these tools kind of in their toolkit, too, so um, keep that in mind as well. Um, if you walk into a situation or started a company that works with PEO, make sure you have an understanding of the tools that they offer. Um, they will always have kind of an HRIS platform for you to use as well. So just thought I'd mention that because not all of them um, bring these things in-house like I've, I've typically done. Moving on to our next question, and I think we touched on this briefly, uh, what strategies do you recommend for maintaining high levels of employee engagement, and how can HR contribute to building a sense of belonging during periods of rapid change? Yeah, um, fundamentally, like, I'll, I'll get on my soapbox about this, but um, <laughs> leader, leadership development is key, um, and making sure that you are um, coaching and helping people managers um, really lead um, their team through periods of rapid change, right? So 
Um, that could be ongoing leadership development, um, that making sure your, your people leaders are equipped with the right skills to um, navigate the change effectively, communicate clearly, check for understanding, um, operate with high levels of empathy, um, be able to inspire their teams through the ups and the downs. Um, it's not always um, it's not always a positive like experience um, going through these changes, especially if you're going through things like restructures and things like that. So, um, really making sure that you invest in your leaders is critical. Um, I swear, and, and this, I you know people could challenge me on this, but your leaders are are the key to your retention at your company. Um, with that being said, to um, in terms of the engagement process, um, communication and transparency is key. Um, making sure that your your team members understand the why be, be behind all of the not all of them, but all of the decisions that are going to be impacting them, um, the why behind them. Making sure that leaders, people, managers are available um, to address concern. Um, I think always fostering an open dialogue is key. Um, you can do this in forums like an all hands, for example, that's on a kind of a regularly scheduled cadence, or um, we've even done it where we've had a CEO do round tables um, with changing teams throughout the year, um, just to ensure kind of that, that intimacy and that, that closeness and that um, uh, opening that forum for them to ask questions and to feel heard. Um, I also think one thing that's really been successful, um, inclusive decision-making. So um, HR can play a critical role um, in, in getting, um, getting listening and understanding um, and making sure that employees feel valued and included. Um, having them partake in solution, solution um, brainstorming um, and in creating kind of that sense of ownership and commitment I think is really, really important as well. Um, HR also plays a vital role, right, in feedback mechanisms and sur surveying. So establishing channels, um, like we've talked about here, um, to provide feedback, um, offer ideas, solutions, things like that. Um, that happens all the time. That should always be kind of at the forefront. Um, it's not just when you're, you know, you're onboarding a new employee, but it's doing things like stay interviews throughout the employee's tenure. Um, another way to really gather good insight and, and feedback, um, some of the most valuable, I think, is through exit interviews um, and taking, to taking the time to do that, um, if the employee is willing to do that, um, to look for ways to improve um, things at the company um, in all aspects as well. Um, I could go on and on about this. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> no, let's, uh, let's, let's pivot and talk about company culture. Um, okay. So sim similar to employee engagement, um, company culture is, is critical um, for the employees and also scaling the, the organization as well as the HR function as well. Um, what role does HR play in fostering a positive work environment? All right, another good, great question. Um, I will say this, HR can be the steward and the champion also be the facilitator of certain things at you know in regards to the culture of the company but when all is said at the end of the day end of the day the leadership team right that should include your head of hr or head of people um really owns and sets the tone in terms of what the desired culture um is at the company so um if you do not have that and it's all on um, put on the hr um team's back it's not going to work um your team is your team members and your employees are constantly looking at their leaders for direction and guidance. So um, leadership really sets the tone in demonstrating what the culture um, and the behaviors of that culture, right, really look like. Um, and, and continually highlighting those behaviors is key. Um, I think, you know, you've got that consistent communication, right? So um, communicating regular updates about things like the company's growth, change, future plans, using different various channels to kind of help people keep employees informed is critical. Um, and I think one thing too, and we talked about culture and values and things like that, but um, be really mindful, I think, too, of the need to adapt your culture as the company grows. Because every single time you add another person, or if you're scaling rapidly, you're adding you know five to 10 people a month, um, there's, your culture is going to shift, right? Um, you're adding different layers of management in, you're adding new teams in, um, you're, you're shifting things that you've done you know, for a long time, you're um, defining swim lanes, you're asking people to take off the 10 hats that they've worn for two years and say, hey, you only have to work, you know, wear two hats now. <laughs> um, 
but identifying in the aspects of the culture that are fundamental and should stay the same, but also being open to evolution. And I think involving your employees in much in, in kind of um, helping define kind of your culture and some of those behaviors is also a really good strategy. I think they feel more empowered and that more of a sense of ownership with it as well. Um, culture should be threaded throughout your organization um, from day one. And I'm talking about day one from like your prospects up from a recruiting standpoint. So it's things like hiring according to your values, um, uh, pulling them into the onboarding process and what that looks like, um, threading them through engagement, um, threading them through leadership development, right? So um, leaders, leaders are acting and leading with the company's culture and values in mind. Um, I also a big, big believer in throwing a component of it in the performance management process. If you have a review process and having employees speak to, you know, how have they been living out the company's values and, and demonstrating that and why it's important. Um, and I also think too, right, it's, it's recognizing and celebrating your culture and your values too. So, um, and, and I think that goes hand in hand with celebrating your company's wins as well. So um, there's so much I could go on about with, with culture, um, but I think my, my biggest nugget um, to pass on is just remember it's going to change. Um, and evolve as the company evolves as well. So it's, it, just to be prepared with that and keep that in mind as you're, as you're kind of building components of it out. A couple of last questions here for you, Becky. Um, from your experience, can, can you share any challenges or lessons learned from scaling the, the HR function? Um, and how does the HR team use these insights to improve future scaling efforts? Yeah, um, I, I've got quite a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I've talked about this before. Um, but your leadership team has to be co a cohesive and aligned team. They, I think they really got to be aligned on what your company's values are um, and drive towards that. Um, they have to have each other's back. Um, I think it is um, super, super critical to make sure you take the time to do strategy planning as a leadership team um, every single year. Um, and then also I, I would recommend a check back like in the middle of year to see where things are at. Um, you, you should be meeting as a le leadership team regularly. So there shouldn't be any surprises, but a good kind of check in on kind of the goals and strategies that, you, that were set at the beginning years is, is always important. I've talked about this multiple times um, of building flexible and adaptable processes and programs. Um, I always take into account, these are all lessons learned. I don't want to, I, I won't go into like how I learned them, but um, things I've learned, I always take into consideration how a new policy or program is going to impact the workloads of um, those that have to implement it and those that have to maintain it. Um, anything you implement, right, is, is typically um, desired to stay consistent. So think of those short, middle, and long-term impacts before you roll out different policies and what that might look like. Not that you can't change a policy, um, but you, you want to treat you know everyone consistently and fairly. Um, always check for understanding, um, even you know if it's, it seems obvious. Um, overemphasize time commitments. Um, I think um, really building that out in a timeline of, of you know, hey, we're going to implement this new um, leadership development program, and here's what it looks like, kind of from a week to week, monthly monthly basic basics, um, is, is super important um, for me in the role of kind of the head of HR, pulse checking your leadership team on a personal level. Um, mm -hmm. I see it a lot, uh, a lot of burnout in that level. Um, and making sure that they're, you know, rem reminding them like, hey, like you should take some time off, um, super important. And um, sometimes it's uncomfortable to have those conversations, but um, in the end, nine times out of 10, they come back and are like, thanks, they really appreciate it. Um, a lot of leaders are carrying a lot of weight on their shoulders and it's, it's nice to know, to make sure that they feel like they're being supported. Um, and I'll end with this one, um, ask and listen to your employees. Um, they, they are going to have some of the best, most valuable solutions to the problems that your company is facing. They are on the front lines. Um, listen to them and take what they say into account. It doesn't mean that you're going to follow it all or listen or follow it all and implement it all. Um, but the more data you have, the better you can make informed um, uh, recommendations and decisions on kind of the company's um, paths forward. Well said. Thanks for sharing. Um, who should reach out to you and why? And what's the best way to connect with you or get in touch with our audience? Yeah, um, I I can be reached or anyone. I'm open to talking to anyone. I, I love 
um, talking with other um, HR people leaders in the startup space, um, you're always learning. It's a never ending journey. I think that's one of the reasons I like being with it. And every company has a different kind of, I would say kind of, there's no tried or true template or format. So um, benchmarking and, and brainstorming with other um, people in the same kind of role I've been is, is super fun, but i um, always willing to talk to people that are looking to maybe make a pivot into the tech um, startup or scale up space as well. Um, I can be reached um, via LinkedIn um, or email is fine, um, beckylossing at gmail.com. Um, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm a pretty personable person, so I love building relationships. Um, but yeah, welcome anyone and everyone. So. Awesome. Uh, our audience will appreciate that. And uh, the last question we have, Becky, um, is there anything you'd like to share or talk about with the work that you're doing today at OnSite or personally? Yeah, um, I'm kind of in an interesting spot. I'll just share this. Um, I'm rolling off um, the Twin Cities um, SHRM Board of Directors. So I've been in um, the president-elect president, now past president role. So it's a big shift in my life. Um, I've been involved with that organization for a long time. I'm not leaving, um, but I am working on um, building out an HR department of, we'll just say one to three kind of special interest group there. So reach out if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, but I am, I'm really kind of, I'm going to continue supporting on-sites and um, I'm always interested to hear about companies um, that might have questions or need support from a consulting standpoint. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. And if I have the bandwidth to help, um, I'd love to. Um, I'm still, I'll say I'm still on the front nine of, of my learning and career journey in, in my head. I, I love to learn and um, so I'm open, open to any, any connections or um, any questions in any way I can help kind of that tech startup scale up space. Thank you so much for joining us today for our 30th episode, Becky. Uh, love the insights you shared and look forward to meeting next week. Thanks, Doug.